So again, I'm having a coffee and I'm just going to I'm just going to speak my mind on this topic. And and the topic is about taking a chance because that's what I've noticed all of this is. I don't I haven't found it to work really well if you're trying to control everything. It's really when you go within yourself, it's when you let go of wanting it is when you really have it. You know, it's to believe you have received what you desire and you will. So what do I have to believe I've received my desire? So I have to actually not necessarily be in desire and not necessarily be focused on what I will receive, but on what I have received inside. And when I when I go to meditate, I just notice that I have, when I let go of wanting to control and I let go of trying to, you know, not necessarily to hold on to it, I, I have it. When I just let go, I start to have the things I otherwise want. And it's really just about taking the chance to do it. I haven't found this to be something that you you force. It's something that you, in a sense, as Neville said, you fall in. William Blake said you want to fall into a state. You almost want to fall backwards into it. And it, this is really similar to what I heard in a dream when Neville told me that it's it's almost like you want to be a, a victim to the wonderful wish fulfilled. Like you want to almost be a victim. Like you want it to over, overcome you. Or you want to fall into it. You want to accept it to a degree to where you feel like it's almost, it almost accepted you. And within all of us, there are certain ideas and thoughts that we wish to have. But as being in an illusion, we think that we can't necessarily accept something in consciousness. You know, consciousness will sort of birth more consciousness. And you shouldn't go outside of oneself to sort of take a thought. You don't need to necessarily have something physical first. And you can test that on yourself. Do I need the physical thing first to accept that I have it? And it doesn't have to be anything physical. You can take a chance on a self-concept, an idea of yourself. You know, or you can just take the honest view. What do I honestly want to see about myself? You'll see the the when you strip off the labels that you're given. And you settle into your own I amness, which is the root of yourself, that you're not your government name, that you're not the race, you're not anything but man. And I mean that by generic man. Um, you're nothing but man. And man's core is I am. And that is the name of God. Which, as I made a short recently, when that would pin you against many other false gods that you've been worshipping, and you have to accept the name and use the name wisely. It's a sort of a duty for man to do while he's here in this world is to call upon the name in distress, in anxiety. Uh, call upon the name when you need saving. And that's what Jesus Christ means. The, na the name means Jehovah saves, and which means I am saves. And so when I need a savior, I go to the I am. I go to I am, which is my own self. I don't find it outside of me. So I don't, you know, God's in a temple not made by human hands. So he dwells in us and is us. And in a sense, it is sort of an inner and outer man. Although they're one, you operate it almost as if it's two to make sense of it. And when you, when you go inside yourself, um, you need to see things as your own. I saw a comment recently that, that said that the person kept seeing a shadowy figure almost deny them of what they wanted. Every time they went to go take it, they were denied. And I used to have similar thoughts. I used to try to practice doing certain exercises in my mind, and I and I just couldn't do them. Like I always would fall, or I couldn't seem to walk. I couldn't... I had almost no... I almost had no ability inside. But over time, I was able to develop it and sustain a, a, a very vivid thought. But the the commenter must see that it's them inside who's denying that it, it all comes back to you. And these thoughts, these scenarios are sort, sort, sort of playing out to reveal to you who you think you are. To, it's always revealing I am. And we've attached certain labels to I am certain ideas. And what I'm asking you to do is to take a chance on something new, 
All we have, it appears to me, is chances. You don't necessarily have to be the best or the greatest or the biggest. You don't necessarily have to. It's about taking the chance when it's there. You'll see it when it's there. And the, th the whole point about taking the chance is that you don't know. And you have to accept a level of unknown to this because as Neville said, I never he never cared about the when and the how. He imagined as if there was no time. He imagined he said I have I would imagine as if I have all the time in the world, because I do. He would accept that fact. Because that would free you from asking the when and the how. And when you focus on those those two, you, you can't really focus on being the thing you want to be. You can't focus on saturating yourself with the the new idea of yourself if you're constantly focused on when you will be it or how you will be it. You must go inward to the world where it already is that way and sort of rest in that world um, or fall backwards, as Blake would say. Fall into the world. Or Neville would say he would yield into it. And he said, if you ask the question, well, what if it doesn't work? You haven't really yielded yet. You haven't necessarily taken the chance. That's all this is. It's taking a, it's dreaming up something new and taking a chance on it, immersing yourself into it. You're not, you're, you won't pass away. You will survive if you change yourself. You will survive. It will feel like a part of you has moved and the, the former feels dead, but you are the I am, which is an awareness that's present. We're told that he's the God of the living, not of the dead. And so you don't have to feel like you're going to die if you change states, even if you've been in a state for a long time. And that's what man is. Man is in states. And God became man, and man is in states. Because God's name is I am. So if I speak, if you guys were all in front of me right now, and you guys were physical people in front of me, I would say that God became us. Because God's name is I am, and each one of us is I am. So he became us. And we will... And in turn, be be him or be God. There's no other. But I am, and in our ignorance and at times stupidity, we create many many false gods to worship, who don't do anything for us. It's not about clasping your hands or going to some building nothing to do with that at all he's in a temple not built by human hands so i don't need to go anywhere other than where i am as neville said you can forget who you are where you are you know i can forget who i am where i am what i am but i can't forget that i am that is what you want to go back to the root of when you meditate you want to find your the core of yourself try to get deeper beyond the labels you were given the names you were given and the ideas you were given of yourself. And it does feel like it's a rubber band in a sense. You pull it all the way back to the I am, and then you selectively decide something that you want to attach to it, and you get shot forward again. And it seems like it's sort of like you're breathing. You go in and you come out. And that's really what our minds are in a sense it's like a womb and you'll give birth to your own concept and again I, I just want to reiterate that you want to take a chance don't don't see it as something you have to control or know everything about it it's trusting in, in the idea that you otherwise don't see physically i mean it's nothing you know it says that faith is hope um the assurance of things hoped for the assurance of things hoped for. And hope, we're always hoping, we're always intending. Whenever you go somewhere, you're always expecting something out of the conversation or out of the place or the environment that you're at. You're always hoping for something. But faith, you transform it into faith when you are assured in the things you're hoping for. You feel assured. The things unseen, you call something as though it is seen, that's unseen. You believe you have received what you otherwise desire. And it's not something you're going to get perfect right away. And you should never apply that pressure on yourself. Neville himself wasn't perfect in it. It's not about that. It's about testing it. Be a tester of this instead of a 
again, trying to be the best at it um, or being hard on yourself. That's not something you would desire anyways. So treat it. You must want to be serious about it. But when you practice it, practice it lightly. So you want to be serious about your lightly practice to get it right. And I haven't found another way other than taking a chance. You're going to have to see it as you're always taking chances inside. You're always thinking something and taking a chance on it. And to no longer think about something and to now think from it. And the difference between those two is the concept of yourself. One will look to an idea of oneself and uh, it would be lovely to be that. And others will actually start being it. And that's the difference between success and failure. That's the difference between having it or not. It's, it's about doing the thing that you want to do. So you want to just take, for example, I don't know, exercise. Start exercising in your mind. You just have to do it. What is it that you want to do? And start to do it. You want to paint, but you have no paint. And you want to paint something beautiful. Just start painting something beautiful in your mind. You want to be something, but you otherwise don't have the means. You start to be it. Consciousness doesn't seem, nor does it appear to me, that it necessarily respects our senses. It doesn't necessarily see it as an obstacle. It almost doesn't even care. And we want to imitate that. Imitate that our minds are, have the ability to see beyond what's there. And it, it sort of almost in a way believes it's there. That's why you're seeing it. And you want to imitate that. So you, you start to believe your own imagination, which is to believe yourself and to trust in yourself that you've changed and moved into the positions you want. And then you find yourself to be your own savior. But you would never claim to be something other than I am. So when you move and save yourself, you would say that God saved me. And that's your very self. And that's a very important point because I remember reading a story of Neville saying that this woman imagined flowers, having receiving this like bouquet of flowers. And they ended up receiving the flowers. But Neville's point wasn't, at this point, he wasn't necessarily interested too much in manifesting um, objects or receiving them. But the point was, beyond, was, was deeper than that, is that you want to thank the being. You can thank the person who gave you the flowers. But you truly want to thank the being within you that even made this event happen. And that, that's your own I am. That, that's your creator. So you, you thank the person, but really in your depths, you thank yourself. It's going to feel like another, but you're going to thank yourself. It's going to be you at the end of the day. And so if you needed something to motivate you, or you needed something to, you've maybe been holding off on a certain idea, you have to see it as a chance. It's not something you're going to perfect. And it's not something you're going to, you don't need to spend more time on it. What you need to do is you need to start being it beyond what your senses are telling you. You might be in a world full of no's, but you say yes to yourself. You grant yourself what you otherwise, you, you, you feel that you've received it. And, and meditate on that idea. Think about what does it mean to desire something and what does it mean to believe I've received it? What do these things actually mean to me? And how would I go about practicing such a thing? It's something I can do. How would I go about it? And in Neville's way, he said you had sensory vividness and you imagine. And I follow that as well. And I've found that to me it's... I never really had a problem doing that. It was more about actually taking the chance on it and accepting it. It was something I've always wanted to do, but I was afraid to take the chance. I was waiting for something. I was waiting for I was waiting for something to change other than myself. Waiting for someone else, waiting for some opportunity. I didn't realize that it was me that I was waiting for this whole time to take a chance on something. 
and believe beyond what I otherwise have always known or what, what I was always taught. And, and when you do that, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have to live a different life and you have to take a chance on that and accept it and don't be afraid of it and know that you will survive it. And you won't doubt it after that. You will stop doubting yourself. <laughs>